Today we conclude our worship series called Wired to Serve. Over the last several weeks, we've been looking at the way that God gives each one of us spiritual gifts to be about God's work in the world. And last week, we considered the talents and the resources, the other gifts that we have, the, the opportunities that we have, the resources available to us to be a part of God's work in the world. And not only that, but to live our lives in a, a productive and faithful way. Today, we begin to draw all of those together because we're given gifts not just for their own good. We have talents and resources, not just to be successful in particular areas, but because God has a dream and a vision for you. God has a plan, an invitation, an opportunity to live life that really is life. And all of our talents and resources, our spiritual gifts play into that. And so we'll be considering a bit today how as individuals and as a congregation, God has dreams and visions that you have on your heart that might help you live in ways that are meaningful and real and allow you to use the way that you've been gifted. The scripture today from Proverbs tells two experiences, describes two experiences that, that are all too common for us in life, a hope delayed and longing fulfilled. And when you think about dreams and visions, I wonder in your life, when you've had those experiences that you've hoped for something and that you found that you've had to wait longer than you expected or anticipated. And then finally, perhaps when you've been longing for something that you finally are able to experience it, it becomes real, it comes into real life and you find fulfillment in what you have longed for. I know that I've had those times in my life and I imagine that you have as well. I want to share just a few stories of my own life of, of hope delayed and longing fulfilled. When I was in high school, I played football. It was one of the things that oriented my life at that time. I played at the Salina Central for the Mustangs, and they were very good at the time in football. Um, when I was a sophomore, we were 5A state champions, um, and I was so glad to be a part of the team. And and I felt good because I was on the kickoff team, uh, so I uh, had uh, just a bit to play in the game, even though I didn't have a very significant role. Um, so I was on special teams um, and felt as part of the team, even though I wasn't really a starter. Now, I, I had a dream, a, a hope that that we would win the state championship again, that I'd be able to be a part of that team. So I played defensive end next year. I started as defensive end. Our goal, again, was to win the state championship. Uh, I, I longed to be a starter on a team that won it all. And yet that year, it, it was not to be. We lost in sub-state. We, we didn't even make it to the championship game. Hope delayed makes the heart sick. In my senior year, I was again a starter at defensive end, and again, our goal was to win the state championship, and it was our goal for the very first game of the season, and we made it to the championship game that year. That year, it was being played over in Manhattan, the field where K-State plays, and it was awesome to be out there and to experience that game, and yet, and yet we lost again. So we made it to the game, but we lost, and I never had that hope, that longing fulfilled in my life. And, and another story from, from my high school years. I, I was a scout, um, and I'm an Eagle Scout, and um, had been scouting throughout my life. Uh, and as a youth, I had the opportunity to go on uh, three uh, high adventure bases. I went to, uh, to Philmont Scout Ranch in New Mexico twice, and, and the Northern Tier High Adventure Base uh, in Ely, Minnesota once. And the first time I was at Philmont, I, I had the opportunity to be part of a crew. And, and if you're familiar with that, uh, you have, uh, there's uh, one youth, um, that's the crew leader, and they, they get to lead the, the expedition. They get to lead the trek. And I had this my idea in my mind. I thought, you know, I, I think I can do that. 
I, I aspire to that one day. I think that I could be the crew leader uh, for a trek. And, and yet at that time, it's, it's one of those experiences that, that really happens um, is oftentimes a once in a lifetime. I wasn't even sure I'd have that opportunity to go again. And yet two years later, I, I was able to, and this time I had the chance to serve as crew leader. And, and now I have the opportunity to be an adult leader as my own children experience scouting adventures. And, and hope delayed makes the heart sick, but longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Now, those are just uh, small examples from my life, and, and there are others that are uh, in your life, perhaps, and in mine that are more significant than, than a sports or a scouting experience. Longing, perhaps, for a la- relationship to be restored. Hoping for a family situation to change, or an employment reality, or a living situation I wonder, where do you find yourself longing for something, dreaming for something, have a vision for what might be possible in the future, and you've experienced it fulfilled, or perhaps you're still waiting? A longing fulfilled can be real for parts of our lives, and it can be real for our entire lives. You see, God cares about every need that exists on earth. God doesn't want anyone to be hurting or to, to be sick or alone or lost. And this is where we have the opportunity to be, uh, use our gifts, our talents, and our resources to be a part of God's work in the world. In his book, The Call, Oz Guinness writes this, The truth is not that God is finding us a place for our gifts, but that God has created us and our gifts for a place of God's choosing. And we will only be ourselves when we are finally there. God hasn't created us God hasn't given a, God is not trying to create a place for our gifts. God has a place for us. And when we find ourselves there, able to use them, this is when we find ourselves truly at home. God counts on us, on you and me, to be God's hands and voice and, and feet in this broken world, to share God's love to those people that may not yet know about it, to offer care and give gifts of mercy like hospital bags to those uh, children in the hospital. And, you know, we can't possibly care about every need. It's an endless list, it seems, when we look at our world. But God places on each one of you a particular vision, a particular need where your heart hurts for those that find themselves hurting, where you feel a desire to be a part of God's work for you, a desire that God places on your heart to make a difference in the world, to live as part of that part of God's kingdom right here in Topeka, God makes us passionate about the calling that God has for us because we're excited about it. We're happy and fulfilled when we find ourselves serving in those ways. When we're able to find a place to use our spiritual gifts, the talents and the resources that we happen to have, this is what brings meaning and fulfillment. And when each one of us begins to understand just a bit of the dream that God has given us and that fulfills that calling in our lives, the body of Christ, all of us together can meet all the needs of those that are hurt and sick and save each person who doesn't yet know about God's love. And so, where is it that you would like to make a difference? What dream or vision is there on your heart? What need in our community do you see and you, you feel that just something has to be done? For some people, this is a simple question. You, you're able to answer that right away, but, but many people struggle with it. Perhaps you, you don't even know what that might be. Maybe you have heard people say things like, well, you know, I, I'm just not passionate about anything. And, and maybe you find yourself there today, and, and that's an okay place to be. But one thing is for sure. Most of us have a clear understanding of what we don't want to do, since we will not feel fulfilled until we're serving in an area where God has gifted us, where, where that are true to God's dream and vision for our life. We have a real need to discover what that is. And, and finding out what we don't want to do or where we are not gifted, that is nearly as valuable in finding that right place. Os Guinness also writes this, in many cases, a clear sense of calling comes only through a time of searching, through trial and error. If you've never experienced a way of serving God or being active in your community or connected with family members and friends, you may not know that it is the place for you. And sometimes when you try it out, you don't have to worry about getting it exactly right. You might find it and try it out and say, oh man, (laughs) That is not for me, and and that is helpful as well. It's part of this journey with God. It's not that we finally arrive at one place knowing that that's it. It's that we look for milestones along the way that say, yes, you are on the right track. 
And sometimes it's signs that say, don't go that way. Try something else. And this is a little bit intimidating at time. I don't know about you, but I like to get things right the first time, and, and that often doesn't, uh, doesn't happen. It means taking risks and just trying something new. And when you think about it, what, what makes it worthwhile to take such risks? Well, the chance is that when we offer ourselves in perhaps a new way of serving, we might find ourselves dependent on God in ways that we haven't before. Because if we know that we're comfortable in a place, if we know that this is a place to serve, um, it's an opportunity for us. And when serving in a new area, we're blazing a new trail in our life. Sometimes we find, yes, this is the place. And sometimes we find, no, this is not the place. But this congregation, this community of folks that we are a part of should be a place where we're able to try new things, where you don't always have to do what you've always done that maybe serving in a new way creates an opportunity for you to fail, to pick yourself up and brush yourself off and, and to start going again, maybe in the same direction or maybe in another direction, knowing that each one, each part of the journey is one that we walk with others. Each part of the journey is a journey that God walks with us. And sometimes we're afraid to step into a dream, what we think might be a dream that God has for us, because we we feel that it's beyond our capabilities or experience. Occasionally, we may have clarity about what God has in mind for us, where God is calling us, and it is hard work. It's not always easy to follow God's dream for our lives, and thankfully, it's not our own capabilities or experience on which we have to rely, but we have the power of the Holy Spirit. That brings us to our second passage of Scripture for the day from Isaiah 40. Youths will become tired and weary. Young men will certainly stumble, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will fly up on wings like eagles. They will run and not be tired. They will walk and not be weary. Hope in the Lord. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. And in this journey of discovering and living into God's dream for us, this is what we need. Confidence and trust that God gives us the strength for the day, that God gives us strength for the journey ahead, even though we may not be clear exactly where that is. This is a chance for us to use our gifts, to discover them, to live into them in new ways, to use our talents and resources to be a part of God's work through this church and in our community. On Wednesday night, I was finishing up, I'd finished up the Alpha course and uh, was waiting for John and Ann so that we could head home after Why Not Wednesday. Um, And as I was waiting, I saw one of the coolest things um, that I've seen lately. I I took a picture of it. Here it is. This is, uh, this is some of our children um, sharing their spiritual gifts um, out in the atrium. Amy Crouch had found, uh, invited her group to to, uh, take the spiritual inventory for children. And when I saw that, I thought, this is, this is exactly right. This is a picture of what God has in mind for each one of us, that we're discovering uh, what God has created us to be, the person that God has created us to be, that God promises that the Holy Spirit will be poured out on all people, older and younger, male, female, married, single, all people receive the gifts of God. And this picture is an inspiration for me to be able to use my gifts to seek to use them in ways that are real and meaningful. And and it's an invitation for you to discover your gifts, to consider God's dreams and visions for your life and how you might use them as a part of God's work through our church. The good news is that God has a dream for your life, no matter how old or how young you are. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. And God has dreams and visions for all of us here at Susanna Wesley. God has given us possibilities together as a congregation, ones that help us experience God's love, that make a difference in the lives of our neighbors and connect with the passions that God has placed in each of our lives. Because we're part of a story, not just for ourselves, not just in our family, not just here at Susanna Wesley. We are a part of God's story. And you know that story began at the very beginning of time. God's dream began when God spoke order out of chaos and created humans from the topsoil of the fertile land and brought life to the earth. God created humanity and placed a single individual in the midst of a beautiful garden to work and to take care of it. God's dream was there at the very beginning of time. 
And God desires to be in relationship with us, with each one of us. But time and again, we turn away. And so God called a particular person, a particular people, said, I will be your God and you will be my people. And God's dream was connected again in that way with humanity. And and God sent God's son, Jesus, to live as a human being, to teach and heal, to call disciples, to invite each one of us to be a part of what God is doing in the world. Jesus teaches and preaches about God's kingdom. This place where God's dream is made real, where where things on earth are done as they're done in heaven. He was crucified and on the third day rose again and promises to be with us at the very end of time. God's dream is active now, here and now, right here in our communities. And one day, one day God's dream for all of us will be fulfilled. At the end of time, the scriptures describe a city and and a garden with a river flowing through it and trees on both sides. And they say that these, these trees have leaves that will be for the healing of the nations. And this place where God's dream is fulfilled completely will be one where there will be no more mourning or crying or death because the old things will have passed away and all will be God's dream, God's dream made real. God will be there at the end of time. And as a congregation, we have the chance to be a part of God's kingdom coming here and now. We celebrated our birthday as a church last month. We turned 35 as a congregation. It's a milestone in our life together. And I want you to begin to imagine with me what God's dream for us will be when we celebrate our 40th birthday in 2025. What do you think that God has in mind for us as Susanna Wesley? Can you imagine what our congregation will be like five years from now? What is God's dream for this part of Topeka that we might be a part of, that we might serve as hands and feet in what God is doing right here among us? What if we believe that every person living in our neighborhood would find a place to belong, to believe, and to be useful? What if we made sure that every child in our community had enough food to eat every day? What if we launched worship environments that invited everyone to connect in ways that were meaningful for them? What if we connected people across generations to serve in new ways, ways that we may not even imagine now? God has uniquely created you. God has uniquely gifted us together here at Susanna Wesley. God has a plan and purpose for your life and for all of our lives together. So let's live into this dream that God has for us. Will you pray with me? Oh God, we give you thanks for the way that you are and continue to be at work in our lives. We're sorry for the ways that we mess up. And we ask for your forgiveness. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit, for filling us with gifts and dreams and visions. And we ask, O oh God, that you would help us to be faithful, to take the next step into the future that we might together live into your dream for all of us so that we can be part of your kingdom coming on earth as it is in heaven, right here and right now in Topeka. We offer ourselves, O God. Use us. In Jesus' name, amen.